Hey, you're listening to Clumsy Theosis, a Catholic podcast that explores topics within the Catholic faith to help us deepen our spiritual lives, own our relationship with the Lord, and strengthen His church. Hello, and welcome to the Clumsy Theosis podcast. My name is Rochelle Lucero, and I'm your host. Last Sunday was Father's Day. Days like Father's Day and Mother's Day, I like to take some time and intentionally focus in on God our Father on Father's Day or our Mother the Church or Mary our Mother on Mother's Day, you know, things like that. But this Father's Day, I found myself focusing on me, which is weird because I am obviously not a father, but I am a child of God our Father. I am a child of God. And so I started wondering, am I a good child of God? And I don't mean, do I behave myself or anything like that? No, I mean, am I truly living as a child of God is supposed to live? When I get dressed in the morning or when I stay in my PJs, courtesy of COVID-19, do I also make that choice to step into my identity as a child of God and live in that identity every day? Now, this is something new for me. I've never thought of anything like this. I don't know if this is new for you, but I think it's a good day to talk about it. But before we do that, take a quick moment with me and put your hands together in prayers of thanksgiving, of course, for our latest donor, Wayne. You are listening to this episode right now because of the generosity of our donors. If you would like to support Clumsy Theosis, you will be responsible for helping this ministry grow. I would be so grateful, I'm sure, Our other listeners would be very grateful. And not only will you have that satisfaction of knowing that you're helping spreading the gospel, you will also have the added benefit of receiving exclusive merchandise and resources from me. So if that's you, if you're interested, head over to clumsytheosis.net and click the word donate in the menu. What does it look like on a day-by-day basis to live as a child of God? The short answer To live as a child of God, there is one thing that you must do, receive. I know that sounds simple, right? The title of today's show has to do with what you must do as a child of God, right? And that makes us think of going and actively doing something rather than sitting back and actively receiving. But that's what we're called to do. We're called to sit back and actively receive. In the scriptures, we read over and over of what God is giving us. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Matthew 7.7 says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. John 14.27, Jesus says, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Matthew 6, 26, look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or stow away in barns, and yet the heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? John 14, 26, the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, and he will teach you all things. John 4, 14, whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall never thirst. The water that I will give him will become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. And then in Luke 7, 48, Jesus said to the woman who anointed his feet, he said, your sins are forgiven. Now, these are just a few verses that came to my head when I sat down to outline this episode, and I'm sure you can come up with many more. And when we look at these uh, passages that I've put forward, many of them are about Jesus. But don't forget that Jesus told us, those who have seen me have seen the Father. By observing the words and the life of Jesus, we know that the Father is giving and giving and giving. He's constantly giving to us. And what the Father is giving to us all boils down to love. It's just in different packages. And as children, we are intended to receive the love of God, our Father. And his love is being showered upon us constantly in many forms and in many blessings. But really quickly, let me clarify. We are free to receive or to reject the many gifts of God's love, okay? So we don't have to receive. We have been given the freedom to reject or to receive the gifts of God our Father. This brings me to my next point. The act of receiving is difficult for many people. And it's one of those tricky things that you might not realize you struggle with. So let me ask you a few questions to see how well you think you are able to receive from others. Okay, first, are you the type of person who does not like to receive gifts? 
Does someone have to metaphorically twist your arm before you will accept a present from them? Can you receive generous gestures? Will you let someone pay for your meal without feeling like you need to buy them dessert or buy them something afterwards? Will you let someone treat you to a movie or a concert or a play or even buy you concessions or a beer without thinking about the next time you can take them out in order to repay them? What about compliments? Can you receive compliments or praise or even an award for a job well done? Or does that type of thing make your skin crawl and make you wish that you could just disappear? Or help. Can you receive help if you are overwhelmed with a job, with a task, or even if you're trying to bring in too many bags of groceries at one time? Will you let someone help you or do you insist on doing everything yourself? Or what about charity or an unrequested favor, right? So say someone offers you charity in the form of money or even just their time, or maybe they pick up something for you on the way into the office or on the way over to your house. Do you receive that gracefully or do you feel uncomfortable and feel like you need to now do something for them? I know these are silly examples, but they prove my point. Receiving is difficult for many people and you might have difficulty receiving and not be aware that you do. You've never noticed it because you can receive some things with no problem, but there are other things that it's really difficult for you to receive. You see how tricky that is? Or, and I see this all the time, I'm guilty of this one too. Did you answer any of those questions that I asked with a qualifier? Like, did you say something like, well, it depends on dot, dot, dot. Why would you do that, right? What does it depend on? How close you are to someone or if you are able to repay them or if you even think you deserve what they're trying to give you? Why do we always do that? These odd behavior patterns that we have towards receiving from others, these can reveal and shed light on how well we can receive from God our Father. And when we realize how difficult it is for us to receive on some level, that's not so good because receiving is what children of God are supposed to do. That's what you and I are supposed to do. Now, typically, when I talk about being a child of God, it's in relationship to our inheritance of the kingdom of heaven, of the glory of the kingdom. And I usually pull out Romans chapter 8, verses 15 through 17. In these verses, it reads, For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of sonship. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is the spirit himself bearing witness with your spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ. This basically means that because God has adopted you at your baptism, you are now his child, like Christ is his child. That means that you are now an heir to the kingdom of heaven, just like Jesus is. The kingdom of heaven that is here today and will continue for all of eternity and all of the glory that is and will come are your inheritance. And it's one of my favorite scriptures for explaining what it means to be a child of God and living out a life of theosis. I think it's a really important scripture, partially because you'd be surprised how many people don't know that they are heirs to the kingdom of God or what that even means. And if you would like more information about that, I'll link an episode down in the show notes for you. I also really like this scripture because it reminds us of God's love for us and how and how big that is, right? And the dignity and value in which he sees in us, right? That he would give us such a great gift, right? And I think it's just downright exciting anyways. But there can be disconnect when I'm talking about this scripture and I'm talking about inheriting the kingdom of God, right? There can be a disconnect between knowing that you are an heir to inheriting the kingdom of God and actually doing it, right? Theory versus practice. The kingdom of heaven is specifically for the children of God. That means that you need to step into your identity as a child of God every day if you want to live in the kingdom of heaven. But like I said, theory versus practice. So let me ask you some questions. These are practical questions here. How do you feel about receiving something that you did not earn? What about something that you don't deserve? I know that it goes against all of our worldly values, but that is what it means in practice for us to live as children of God. 
And we need to get in the habit of receiving the love of God on a daily basis. We need to get in the habit of receiving something that we did not earn or something that we do not deserve, right? Because how else do you expect to receive your inheritance? Because there's no way, there's no way that we could earn our inheritance or deserve our inheritance, which is the kingdom of heaven. We have to come to terms with the fact that we are moochers. We are dependent on the Father for everything, but that is okay because he does not hold that over us in any way. But instead he says, come on, mooch some more. I have more to give you, right? He just wants to give us gifts over and over and over, right? These are gifts that are freely given from a generous father to his children just because he loves us and we are his. Now, if the identity of a child of God is one of constant reception, how can you and I get in the daily habit of receiving the love of God in all of the many forms he is showering it upon us? Okay, we can start by cultivating gratitude. When we wake up in the morning, thank God for three things before you get out of your bed and really mean them. I typically thank God for the day that is to come and all of the blessings that will come in that day. I also thank God for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And I oftentimes will thank God for my bed. (laughs) I love sleeping. I love naps. I love my bed. And so before I have to leave it in the morning, I often thank God for my bed. Um, But there are other things, you know, and sometimes I go more than three. But the idea here is I am setting myself up to notice all of the gifts that the Father is going to send me throughout the day. Because when I'm open to seeing them, I'm more open to receiving them, right? I can see them and I can receive them now with a generous spirit. I'm aware that they're coming because they are coming. Like floods and floods of gifts and graces are being poured on all of us every day. When you go to bed at night, Do your examination of conscience, but also take some time during that time with the Lord to thank him. Thank the Father for all the ways in which he loved you that day. Acknowledge all of God's graces and gifts that were showered upon you, big or small. Next, use the gifts that you have been given. I just did an episode on this. You are filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the gift that keeps on giving. If you want to walk in your identity as a child of God on a regular basis, receiving these gifts of the Holy Spirit and growing in them is a necessity. And I will link that episode in the show notes for you so you can really start cultivating and using those gifts. Those gifts are not meant to be put on a shelf. They are meant to be used. Lastly, in prayer, let God love you for who you are, not what you do, not what you've accomplished or how much you earn or who loves you, accepts you, and who holds you in high esteem. Those are petty worldly measures of success. That's the type of stuff that you can't take with you. When I need to remember who I am to God and how he loves me just because he created me, I like to sit with Psalm 139. In Psalm 139, I mean, there's a lot of good stuff in there, but particularly two verses work really well for me. I think it's 13 and 14, but the psalmist says this about God. He says, for it was you who formed my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, O Lord, that I know very well. See, these verses remind me that before I had ever done anything, good, bad, or in between, God declared me as a wonderful work, fearfully and wonderfully made. And I still am through his mercy. I still am. And it's just because he says so. Now, my hope is that this episode will help you put on your identity as a child of God every day to step into that attitude of reception because it is the foundation of living in the kingdom, of stepping into your inheritance, It's the starting point for living a life of constant transformation of a life of theosis in which you become that unique saint that only you can be. And the world definitely needs you to become that saint for sure. Okay, if you like this episode, would you please take some time and send it to a friend or two or 10? Any amount works. But please share this episode and don't forget to check out the show notes. 
I've got notes and links to all kinds of things, including my social media channels, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you do not already follow me, please do. And please feel free to reach out to me. Let me know what you thought of this episode. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions for future episode topics, really appreciate those. All right, friend, until next week, peace out. Thank you for tuning in to Clumsy Theosis. I'm so happy that you've been able to hang out. If you want to learn more about Clumsy Theosis, you are more than welcome to visit my website, clumsytheosis.net. From clumsytheosis.net, you will also be able to contact me if you're interested in booking me as a speaker or if you're just feeling generous and you'd like to make a donation. Remember that together we can transform the world by letting the Lord transform us.